Welcome everybody to this eChurch video for Sunday the 17th of May, the 6th Sunday of Easter. As usual, I hope that you will find this video helps you to pray as we continue to live in uncertain and confusing times. We continue to celebrate our Lord's re resurrection and to reflect on its meaning in our own lives as Christians in our place and our time. Do be assured of my continued love and prayers for you all and may God bless you all. In baptism we died with Christ so that as Christ was raised from the dead we might walk in newness of life. Let us receive new life in him as we confess our sins in penitence and faith. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with the living bread. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Risen Christ, by the lakeside you renewed your call to your disciples. Help your church to obey your command and draw the nations to the fire of your love, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Then Paul stood in front of the Areopagus and said, Athenians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as I went through the city and looked carefully at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with the inscription to an unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you, the God who made the world and everything in it, he who is Lord of heaven and earth does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mortals life and breath and all things. From one ancestor he made all nations to inhabit the whole earth, and he allotted the times of their existence and the boundaries of the places where they would live, so that they would search for God, and perhaps grope for him and find him, though indeed he is not far from each one of us, for in him we live and move and have our being. As even some of your own poets have said, for we too are his offspring. Since we are God's offspring, 
We ought not to think that the deity is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of mortals. While God has overlooked the times of human ignorance, now he commands all people everywhere to repent, because he has fixed the day on which he will have the world judge in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed. And of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. Bless our God, O you peoples. Make the voice of his praise to be heard. Who holds our souls in life and suffers not our feet, our feet to slip. For you, O God, have proved us you have tried us as silver is tried. You, you brought, brought us, us into the snare. You lay, you lay heavy burdens, burdens upon our backs. You let enemies ride over our heads. We went through fire and water. But you brought us out into a place of liberty. I will, I will come, come into, into your house with, with burnt, burnt offerings, offerings and will pay you my vows. Which, which my, my lips uttered, uttered and, and my, my mouth, mouth promised when, when I was, I was in, in trouble. trouble. I will offer you fat burnt sacrifices with the smoke of rams. I will sacrifice oxen and goats. Come, Come and, and listen, listen, all you who fear God, God and, and I, I will tell you what he has done for my soul. I called to him with my mouth, and his praise was on my tongue. If I had, I had nursed evil, evil in my heart, the Lord, Lord would not, not have heard me. But in truth God has heard me. He has heeded the voice of my prayer. Blessed, Blessed be God, who has, who has not rejected my prayer, nor withheld his loving mercy from me. Now who will harm you if you are eager to do what is good? But even if you do suffer for doing what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear what they fear, and do not be intimidated, but in your heart sanctify Christ as Lord. Always be ready to make your defence to anyone who demands from you an accounting for the hope that is in you, yet do it with gentleness and reverence. Keep your conscience clear, so that when you are maligned, those who abuse you for your good conduct in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if suffering should be God's will, than to suffer for doing evil. For Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey, when God waited patiently in the days of Noah, during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were saved through water. And baptism, which this prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience, through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God, with angels, authorities and powers made subject to him. If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of Truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned, I am coming to you. In a little while the world will no longer see me, but you will see me, because I live, you also will live. On that day you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. 
They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me, and those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. Well, our Bible readings this morning offer us an embarrassment of riches. St Paul's brilliant sermon in Athens showing how people's imprecise spiritual instincts find precise fulfilment in Christ. St Peter's unsurpassable one-line summary of the Christian gospel. Christ suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, to bring you to God. As well as his imperative that Christian folk should always be ready to give an account of the hope that is in us. These are all worthy of extended exploration. And as if this were not already far too much to tackle on a single Sunday, that is not all that feeds into our reflections this morning, since we find ourselves this weekend at the beginning of a process that will, in time, lead us back to regular worship together in the church building. The first step of that happens this very morning, as I will, for the first time since the lockdown, preside at a simple Eucharist in church, attended only by myself and my wife. With all this on our plates, we need to focus, and I want to focus on perhaps the most familiar and best loved of all today's marvellous passages of Scripture, a couple of verses that many of us will perhaps know better in the authorised version of the Bible. If ye love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you for ever, even the Spirit of truth. Rather than my usual three points, I want to make five observations about these words of Jesus and to apply each of them to our current situation. First then, notice that the passage viewed as a whole gives a deep insight into the mystery of the Holy Trinity. I say insight on purpose, I'm not talking about understanding or making sense of the Trinity. Nevertheless, in these words we encounter Jesus praying to the Father for the gift of the Spirit to be given to his followers. And for me, this is a timely reminder to the whole church that our resolve to be Trinitarian Christians must not weaken. We believe in a God who is present and active in the world of time and space, yet also eternal and unchanging, entirely other and beyond our everyday experience. A God who is made visible to us in the man Jesus, a God who draws alongside us by the Holy Spirit, and yet who remains hidden and unapproachable in holiness. God is with us and beyond us. All this and more is present in the doctrine of God as Holy Trinity. And in our current circumstances, what could be more important than to remember that? These current unprecedented events require us to acknowledge the mystery of God's eternal purposes, God's holiness, God's otherness. These things are beyond us. The comfort of our faith is not that we understand God, but that we can, if we want, know God's presence. A second observation is that this passage begins with a conditional. If you love me, then you will keep my commandments and I will pray to the Father for you. Jesus, in other words, wants his followers to show their love for him by their obedience to him. It's often quite rightly emphasised that Jesus commanded people to love and forgive each other. But he also told his disciples to take bread and wine and eat it and drink it in remembrance of him. He told them to make disciples of all nations, baptising them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And we are in the horrible position at the moment of being prevented from doing these things in anything like the normal way. For me and for many of you I know, it is the loss of the Eucharist that is felt most keenly. 
I also know that many of you are aware of the different ways that different parish priests around the city and country are responding to being prevented from coming together to celebrate the Eucharist in church. Some are simply not celebrating the Eucharist at all. Some are filming a Eucharist for people to watch at home. Others, myself included, are offering a Eucharist with members of their own household, but not broadcasting or live streaming that celebration. It's unsettling, I think, for Christian people to see such a range of responses, and more so to witness clergy and others arguing publicly and frankly not always politely, about which is correct. I don't want to do that. All I want to say is that for me, much of what is important about the Eucharist simply cannot be replicated in a live stream on the internet, which is why I don't feel that it would be right for me to take that approach. I do feel, however, that it is right for me to continue to offer the Eucharist and to bring the people and needs of this parish to the altar. The experience of doing this during the lockdown has been uncomfortable, and I have missed you all very much indeed. It has also been interesting to note how much more intercessory the celebration has become. To pray for you at the altar, even when you are not there with me, is a painful privilege, and I increasingly feel a duty I mustn't shirk. With the eChurch mailing this week, I'm sending again Alice's reflections on spiritual communion and guidelines on how to practice this formally, should you so wish. I do invite you to explore this way of making a connection between your own prayers and the offering of the Eucharist in the parish perhaps most especially now that this is once again taking place in the parish church building. Thirdly, and more briefly now, notice that the heart of the passage is a promise. The Father will give you another comforter or advocate. The Greek word is parakletos, which is sometimes given in English as paraclete, The idea here is of one who comforts, advises, represents and enables. God's presence by the Spirit is not limited to any or even all of these roles in our lives, but we can expect all of them to be part of our experience. The promise of the Spirit is particularly important to us at this time, since whatever else may be bound up in the places and objects that we use for worship and fellowship, The Spirit of Almighty God most certainly is not. There is no place we can go where the Spirit cannot find us. There is no phase of life, no suffering or joy from which the Spirit can be excluded. If we love Jesus, if we are doing our best to keep his commandments, we can confidently expect that God's Spirit will be with us, comforting, advising, inspiring even, perhaps especially at times like these. Fourthly, and still more briefly, notice that the passage concludes by telling us that this paraclete is the spirit of truth. The truth of God in this world is Jesus Christ himself, as we saw last week, so that the Holy Spirit is the spirit of Christ given to the church to continue the ministry of Christ, the work of God in reconciling the whole world to God. There is a way of seeing the world that seems honest and truthful, that may even seem hard-headed and unflinchingly realistic, but it is, in the light of God's truth, nonsense. Now more than ever, it seems to me, we are called to set the events of our lives in the context of a bigger story, the truth sent from above that we sing about at Christmas. Our current troubles aren't trivial, and I wouldn't wish to minimise them. But for Christian folk, they are a small detail in a huge canvas, at most a single rhyme in God's redemption song. My final observation returns to looking at the passage as a whole, and it is that these words of Jesus need to be read as instructions to his church, to the entire community of Christian people over the centuries. That, indeed, is St John's purpose in reporting them, And later in this long discourse, we will encounter Jesus praying explicitly, not just for the disciples who were with him in that moment, but for all those who will believe as a result of their testimony. 
for us, in other words. So this entire passage is addressed quite genuinely to us. And so I conclude with a question. Is this the kind of church we are, the kind we want to be? A church that confidently expects Jesus to pray for us, that diligently seeks to obey his commandments, that knows the presence of the Holy Spirit, one that above and within all of this loves Jesus? That is my prayer in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In joy and hope, let us pray to the Father that our risen Saviour may fill us with the joy of his glorious and life-giving resurrection. For those who are anxious or afraid, for those who are sad and lonely, for those who are burdened by heavy responsibilities. We pray to the Father. Hear our prayer. That isolated and persecuted churches may find fresh strength in the good news of Easter. for the Church in England and the Church of England, for the parish of St Nicholas Newport, for Christians prevented from meeting together to pray and to worship, we pray to the Father. Hear our prayer. that God may grant us humility to be subject to one another in Christian love, for wisdom to discern opportunities to help and to serve, for courage to meet the needs of our neighbours, for perseverance in ministry. We pray to the Father. Hear our prayer. That he may provide for those who lack food, work or shelter. For those who depend on charity for food. For agencies and charities that support the poor and homeless. For generous hearts and willing hands to do our part. We pray to the Father. Hear our prayer. That by his power war and famine may cease throughout all the world. For nations whose conflicts are currently forgotten. For places where hunger is a fact of everyday life. for interventions that meet the real needs of real people. We pray to the Father. Hear our prayer. That he may reveal the light of his presence to the sick, the weak and the dying, to comfort and strengthen them. For those known to us whose lives are drawing to a close. For those suffering from COVID-19. For those who work in the NHS and in care homes. We pray to the Father. Hear our prayer. that, according to his promises, all who have died in the faith of the resurrection may be raised on the last day. For those who have died recently, for those who have died with coronavirus, for those whom we have loved and lost, we pray to the Father. 
Hear our prayer. That he may send the fire of the Holy Spirit upon his people, so that we may bear faithful witness to his resurrection. For brave hearts to witness boldly. For compassionate hearts to serve willingly. For joyful hearts to worship faithfully. We pray to the Father. Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you have delivered us from the power of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of your Son. Grant that, as his death has recalled us to life, so his continual presence in us may raise us to eternal joy through Christ our Lord. Amen. God the Father, by whose glory Christ was raised from the dead, strengthen you to walk with him in his risen life. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you this day and all your days. Amen. <laughs>